Are we all cured? We got to fucking. We, we, we've got to do the fucking shit that we need for fucking uh, drug abuse. No, 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 no! no. no. Sean here, and today we're going to talk about something that may not be as obvious as some of his other issues. Lawrence Rage, we talked about, is a necessity for him as a defense. When he's not getting his way, when someone asks him something that he can't answer or doesn't want to answer, but I don't think... But but I don't think that when he was a child, even throughout his middle school and high school years, quite honestly, it's carried over into his failed adulthood. This is his desperate need to be heard. We talk a lot about how he interacts with women on the phone and how he wants to stay on the phone for nine to ten hours. I have never had a 9 to 10 hour conversation in my life and I have lived overseas. People I hadn't talked to in years. The most we ever talked was like an hour, an hour and a half and that was a dear friend who I hadn't seen in a long time. So let me just say this. Lauren grew up in a household where he was the little guy. His siblings were probably the stars. We've heard his disdain for them when he talks to his mom. Why do you always stick up for them? I think Lauren was a screw-up. He knows he's always been the screw-up. He didn't get a lot of attention from girls. I think maybe a couple giggling schoolgirls in middle school may have thought he was cute. But you can't take looks and then balance them with his behavior. Because, yeah, he may get a little interest in the beginning. This is why he's a virgin, folks. He may get a little interest in the beginning, but from what I understand from, quote, Hank, unquote, he was always like this. He would scream and yell in the middle of an assembly. He would say some stupid shit. One time he was mooing, I guess. They had a class, like, theater play, and a heavyset girl came out, and he started mooing right in the middle of the play. So he was removed from the fucking auditorium. That doesn't surprise me at all. One time, we were in a play, and a guy by the name of James Burchett, he had to kiss another girl during the play. It was really quiet, it was awkward, and I just said, get it, Burchett, and the whole theater started laughing because the joke, it was to break the tension. But Lorne, it was basically shaking his verbal dick at them, saying, look at my little dick, pay attention to me. I said the Hank in quotes because that's not his real name. And I told somebody yesterday, listen, that's not his real name. And I will explain it again. He doesn't want his real name associated in searches with an alcoholic, abusive, rage monster pedophile. Especially since he has kids and grandkids. He's probably going to send it back because he didn't want it. But because I am who I am and... The Italian in me says, I'm sending you a gift. You better take it. I sent him some money for his time. Because I would do it for anybody that did that for me. He didn't have to do that. Moving on. So Lorne, even from middle school and high school, he desperately needed to be heard. And I think we know that. How many times has he said, listen to me? And some of you have pointed out he wants to be chased so bad. When he hangs up the phone... He's just sitting there waiting. They call back, what? This is a dream of his. This is a dream that he isn't the one having to call people back and bug them and leave 100 messages because he is bipolar. We've talked about it. He wants that instant forgiveness, instant gratification, and he will, he will not stop until they answer the phone. And that's the way they are. You know, I thought borderline personality disorder, but it's not the same. I kind of went back and forth. I've really evaluated my diagnoses of him. And I will tell you that bipolar 2 is it. And I thought maybe bipolar 1, but it's not. And some of you could be right. This dude could be a psycho. And the reason I say that, in Germany, there was a killer. Killed two women. This was back in the early 1900s. In the century that 
Mr. Penis was famously born. He killed two women and he put stones in the corners of their mouth. He is so obscure. He's in a book, but if you search for him on the internet, good luck. You may come across something, but it's not something significant. He's not going to draw attention like when you do a webpage on Ted Bundy. His name was Wilhelm, of course it was, something or other. If I feel like it, I'll look up the last name, but he was a case study. He put the rocks in the women's mouth so it would hold them open because they wouldn't talk to him. Holy shit, man, that's a deep-seated need for attention. Right there. Please look at me. And I think Lauren, with this screaming, call me back, please, calling a hundred times a day, all of those text messages, and when they don't answer back, he feels like he doesn't have a voice. And again, growing up as the little failure in the household, and his siblings probably getting the good grades, and Lauren barely scraping by, and they handed him his diploma. He didn't earn it. That was confirmed, so thank you. I think it was Dan Jones, maybe, or Gio. I cannot remember. Please forgive me. But you were correct. He did not receive his diploma at graduation. He received it after graduation. Think about that. Get the fuck out of here. I have no doubt that Mama Gwen went to the school, said, look, he's got learning issues, whatever, excuse, excuse, excuse. And they were like, shit, yeah, let's get him out of here. Okay, Mama Gwen, here's his diploma. Now, this is typical, Lauren. If I wasn't going to get my diploma with everybody else, I would not have shown up in the audience at graduation, but he did. I just think that's weird. And when you don't have a lot of people in your school, everybody knows everything about everyone. There was a bit of sympathy for him. They tried to include him in shit. I'm going to give you a little point of reference. Lauren's story about losing friends because he quit the basketball team is bullshit. I think we all know that what happened was, okay, Lauren, we're going to include you on this. We don't have a lot to choose from. At that time, not everybody was tall, like most of them end up being that are on the team. Once the team was over, those guys didn't have to interact with him anymore. That's just my opinion. So Lauren quote, lost his friends, unquote, to say it as Ramona would. So I think that explains a lot. And his deal with Kayla, having to be online all of the time, sending her offlines, we know he's he was concerned that she might have find, found an age-appropriate boyfriend, boyfriend-girlfriend, or that she may have been cheating on him with another man. He wanted her to go, remember this, he wanted her to go invisible so he was the focus on me please don't talk to your friends yeah it was a little paranoia and he is selfish and he is needy and clingy and controlling but I think it's more please listen to me nobody has ever listened to me the only way Winnie that you'll listen to me is if I mention Xavier so this is another this is more proof that he will say and do anything to get someone's attention Get my attention, get me away from winning, to get somebody's attention so that they will focus on him, so they'll listen to him. His voicemail to Debbie on the Call Me Back Honey collection on Wine Lover's channel, and I'm going to take this time to apologize. I don't know about all the back, backstage drama. I don't need to know about it. The community doesn't need to know about it. And there's a bunch of fucking drama farmers that claim they aren't, and they are. It gets clicks. I get it. But it also continues the pattern of behavior for the next people who rise to prominence and notoriety. They're going to act the same and think that's the way to act. If you're in this community long enough and you're in a position where you get a little notoriety, you become Lorne. I mean, Jesus, watch the Kelp Pill narrative. I forced myself to watch it. I couldn't believe these were adults interacting. It was unreal. But we're talking about Lorne. The voicemail I was referencing. Lauren's voicemail was, I would appreciate it if you call me back on your phone. He doesn't want anybody else on the phone. He doesn't want, obviously, no one to expose him. But he doesn't want anyone else to be heard except for him. Imagine the hell he was in when, <laughs> when Barry, the therapist, would not shut up. 
He blocked him out. I guarantee you, Lauren was pacing around his trailer, wasn't even listening. He was immediately thinking of what he was going to say. Once he gets the floor, like when he was talking to Ramona, wrong, wrong, no, no. Once he gets the floor, he doesn't want to give it up. And yes, it is control. And yes, he wants to control the narrative. But at the same time, he's the only one that want, he's the only one that should be heard in his head. And the only way to make sure that happens is to never stop talking. Imagine in high school, you're in a group, you're all having a conversation. Here comes this little annoying guy, and he butts in, and he starts talking about it. And as he did, apparently, you know, my mom, what my mom told me, my mom. You'd want to just drop kick him out of the group. But because he never got that attention, I give him the attention you deserve, because he never got that attention from people. It was always heaped on his siblings. And you know how Lauren's like, well, I went over and helped somebody move a bunch of bales of hay compared to the doctor. He doesn't want anyone else to have credit either. And we briefly touched on that. But when you don't have a voice, when what you say has never had value, and these catfish women pretend that it does, you give him an inch, he's going to take a mile. A 10 mile yard sale. He's going to take a mile. And he's not going to stop until someone makes him stop. He's that giant boulder that once it starts rolling downhill, it's going to have to meet the immovable object to get him to wake the hell up, to stop yapping, and to let somebody else talk. He's not capable of a two-way conversation because he wants to get everything out at one time. He needs to make sure everything he wants to say is heard. I imagine Lorne as a pro wrestler cutting a promo and it just keeps going and going. There was a famous wrestler they used to say when he talked, it was great googly moogly. I can't remember the name. It wasn't Ahmed Johnson. That's the modern great googly moogly. This was one in the 70s. And he was supposed to plug the pay-per-view. But he rambled so long. And he, he couldn't understand what he was saying. And finally, right before it was going off air. And don't forget to check. And boom. It would cut off. So they didn't have him on commentary anymore. But if you gave Lorne the floor... He would talk for hours about nothing. Here's the deal. You want to be heard, Lauren, but you have nothing to talk about. You don't have any hobbies. If you were interesting, maybe people would listen. People will forgive you, forgive your shortcomings if you're interesting. Sometimes if you're beautiful, if you're handsome, they'll forget your shortcomings. That's, that's just the truth, especially when you're younger and you're dating. With Lauren, though, he, he's not interesting. He's older. He's hideous looking, misshapen. Yeah, I, I feel a little, I guess, guilty for talking negatively, but this is a pedophile we're talking about. One that has thankfully created a large community of people who just can't believe his behavior. Lauren, you're being heard. This is the irony. Because of your dumb shit actions, you are finally being heard by tens of thousands of people. So you got your wish, Lauren. You got your notoriety, which is why you refuse to accept responsibility. Because if you do, it will take the importance of finally becoming someone of note. Finally being heard. It will take that away. Those are my thoughts on a Wednesday. I love you guys. I made another video. I may put it out as well. It's catfish ideas. It just depends. But I love you guys. I will see you in the next one.